What's up everybody, it's Spirit with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Cisco Cargo. Now, this doesn't have a huge interior, uh, but I thought the ship was a pretty cool idea and look uh, outer design and stuff looked pretty cool overall. It doesn't it is a mod list barring the um, LCD script from I believe it's M Masters that runs all the LCD panels and everything. Everything else is vanilla, if my memory serves. Uh, it's basically a cargo ship, as the name implies, for hauling and other types of things, but then there's also... I'm not sure if I want to risk trying it, but there's also a projector system set up that basically... I wonder if these have the instructions? Projector for a large ship? No, it's just telling you what the power is and everything. Um... Let's see, bay light, auto welder on or off, oh, open something, close something. Um, so essentially it's supposed to create little mining ships and stuff that then can come back and dock and unload and all that stuff, which is why there's um, auto welders here. And there should be, I don't know where they have them buried, but there should be a projector around here somewhere. Maybe that's them. I think that looks like a projector block. And it's also set up to where it has a large and a small projector so you can build on two different grids, which I thought was a pretty nifty little feature. Uh, let's see... Oh, toolbar. There we go. Projector command. Bay lights. Oxygen tanks. Generators. Farms. Welders. Sensor. Bay connectors, collectors, external connectors, blah, 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 blah. Small projector direction controls, large projector direction controls. So it's pretty cool how it's all set up like this. Um, you've got your cargo readouts on the side, and then what you basically can do from there. Button configurations. Yeah, so pretty neat in that regard. I do like this, too. I've never seen the landing gears covered in glass before, but that's a pretty nifty little idea. So... Let's open the hangar. Oh, hangar! That's what the... that means. Okay. Whee! So, and then you'd have this for storing those smaller ships and stuff. You can connect to those there. You can unload, offload the cargo, which is a pretty nifty feature for a cargo ship. Um, I don't know if there's... okay, there's no... there is cameras and stuff for docking as well available. Again, cool little feature. Um, it looks like... unless I'm missing something... which I probably am... oh, there it is. Door opens automatically because of the tight. Some doors take three seconds but do not open manually. Oh, okay, that's why there's a sensor block on the floor. Okay. I uh, maybe. Okay, well that's not gonna work. Okay, no way up from there. So where does this go, then? Okay, we've got an air vent. It looks like an external access door. Maybe? I heard the sensor click. Oh well. Yeah, I keep hearing the sensor, but it's not actually doing anything. Um, I don't know how to get into that other doorway, considering that it keeps kicking me Objective out. Complete. Unless I just turned my jetpack on already. Objective See, it's just... it's kicking me out every time it opens. Objective there we go. I just had to hold forward against the air pressure, I guess. I have a feeling that's probably unintentional. And then this looks like, let's see, we got the medical room. Actually, it has a bigger interior than I thought it would. Cryo chamber with the programmable blocks. 
these buttons do? I can't read some of these. Backlight. Programmable. Okay, so they're probably running scripts on those buttons. Um, well, this is interesting. Okay, so I don't know exactly what just happened there, but Space Engineer's last few times I've loaded and unloaded and done things and stuff has been giving me these display driver crashes, which is really annoying. But that's what happened. That's what it gave me. And that's why I'm back up and running over here instead of where we were. So, bridge light, air vent, depressurize, all lights, all doors. So, yeah, we got all of our information panel. This is the bridge, obviously. Um, let's see. Okay, that's back where I crashed, so I don't really want to go back over in that area. That's another entrance. Okay, so I think we pretty much explored everything there is to see on this ship. Which, arguably, it did have a lot more to look at than I expected. So anyways, that is it for this one, I believe. So let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, so here we have the Far Out... Far Reach Outpost, I think. I think that was the name of it. Maybe. Wait, do I have it? I, I might have it sideways. Whoops. Yeah, I do. I have it sideways. There we go. <clears throat> I give you the... <laughs> Alright. So, yeah. This one is actually designed to be... It's called an outpost, but it is a ship. It's actually designed to be a long-range ship, I guess, for self-sustaining missions and such. Um where you may need to either reach another ship or just you're going on a long, long mission and need to be self-sufficient. So it has rotating solar panels and I don't know if the oxygen farms, it doesn't look like those rotate, but the solar panels are said to rotate depending on how you want them angled for the sun, which is cool. I do like that. I do like that idea. Um, I even worked on a script for that in my programming series where it would auto-rotate according to the sun, which is a pretty neat idea in general. So let's take a peek on the inside. Okay, this is another one of those where they have the sensor set up, but it's not detecting things. Um, okay. I'm just gonna turn this on so that I can open a door. And I guess we don't have any gravity? Oh, there it is. I was like, that'd be weird. Alright. We are in. Now, what are the- oh, that's button panels that aren't finished. I was like, what is that? That's kind of cool. Alright, so let's go... let's look it down first. Um, Besides the self-sufficient solar and oxygen systems, it does have some basic defense um, with turrets and Gatling guns and all that kind of stuff. I gotta admit, a large reason I picked this one though was for this right here. They showed this in the thumbnail and I fell in love with it instantly. Uh, which is a glass tunnel, and anyone that's seen my Subnautica series knows how much I like glass tunnels. They just look cool, you can see everything, gives it a very sci-fi kind of feel to it, because you see that in those sci-fi movies all the time, where they have big glass walkways and stuff like that. Actually, I just realized something. You lose gravity somewhere along there. Huh, that's kind of cool. So you could actually just float through in a zero-g environment. That's kind of neat. No entry for unqualified personnel. And then where's the grav? There's the gravity. Cool. That's pretty cool. Alright, and then we have gravity and our reactors and looks like a wait, are there reactors in here? I thought those were reactors. Those are actually assemblers or refineries with modules. There are backup uh, reactors on the ship. It apparently primarily uses batteries, if I read that correctly. 
Um, but in case of emergency, it does have a uh, reactor set up. I just don't know if they're in here or if they're somewhere else. There's a vent. So this is an airlock. No? What the? How did they grab me and pull me back in? Okay, that's a cargo. I really don't see the reactors anywhere, so I don't know if they're in this room or not. The controls are over here. I saw them on the buttons. And another airlock. Okay. Whee! That's pretty cool. Alright, so these I'm guessing, while not airlocks, are your entries to the landing pads that are on the outside there for small ships to connect and resupply. Or resupply you, depending on how this is being used. And then we'll go up here. Is this the bridge air vent thrusters, main reactors, backup reactors? Okay, so this is actually the main control station, I guess, for the ship. So that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. But yeah, it's primarily supposed to be for very long, um, like, interstellar trips, or for being a resupply point for ships that have gone really far. So it's kind of a mobile station in a way, which is pretty neat to me. I thought that was pretty cool. I do like the rotating solar panels though, that's a nice touch for something that's so supposed to be self-sufficient. And according to the description, obviously I haven't done any testing on it, but I guess the solar panels and the oxygen farms are enough to keep the whole ship running. Uh, if they're all running at optimum, I guess. I mean, that's a assumption. So, anyways, that's this build, so let's move on to our last one. Alrighty, so last we have the Nerea, which I will point this out right off the bat. It is uh, titled as a work in progress, so bear that in mind. I just thought it was really cool looking, so I wanted to show it off. Because the idea or at least what I think the idea is, is really freaking cool. It's a heavy battle cruiser by the description, and it is survival ready, vanilla um, ship. There's no mods, at least not at the moment. Um, but I don't know, the description was very thin. Uh, that's about all the description actually said, other than it does have three types of thrusters. It has all three, the ion, atmospheric, and uh, hydrogen. So in theory, I don't, I haven't personally done any testing on it, but in theory it should be able to work in any environment. Um, but I don't know, because the description was so light, what exactly the inspiration behind this is, but immediately I thought to myself, it's a battle cruiser that looks like a cruise ship, which I thought was a really cool idea. Um, you know, how the, I mean, it, it does look like other battle cruisers and stuff, but I, it could be just the white and the elongated um, hull and stuff and the point. Just, I don't know. Something about it just made me think cruise ship. So I thought it was really neat looking. Um, and I'm actually, with these angles and stuff, thinking of some different ideas that I could do on my own ship since it has kind of an inverted version of this. Like on mine, this would be kind of the nose. Which isn't a bad idea, actually. I like all the missiles on it. That would definitely be able to make it pack a punch. Let's see. Now, with it being work in progress, I also don't know what is missing. I don't know what has yet to be done on the ship. So, like I said, just bear all that in mind. I am seeing, though, we've got plenty of solar panels here and a lot of oxygen farms, so it definitely looks like it's designed to be self-sufficient which is cool, or regenerating power, I should say. Regenerating power and air. Um, okay, so all of this, one interesting thing to note, we are missing gravity, it looks like, is all of this kind of stuff is exposed, which, given that it's just thrusters and gyroscopes, isn't really a big deal. Um, but it also means you can't really work on some of this stuff or, or uh, move around in here with uh, since it's 
or you can, but it's going to be drawn on your air because it's not an airtight system there. So that's one thing. This looks like, you know, in current ships it would be a helipad, but this is kind of your landing zone where you can dump off stuff and then connect or land or whatever by the looks of things. I don't know what this is for. It doesn't have any quick slots set up. Whoa. Why did everything get a blue hue to it? What did I do? Did anyone else notice that? Everything looks white out here, and then when I got in here, everything got blue, or is that just me? Maybe that's just me noticing some things. I don't know. Weird. Um, alright. Let's see what else we can find in here. These look like laser antennas. By the looks of things. So we have a back deck that goes this way into the main the main room. Maybe this is intended to be another floor that hasn't been built yet. Okay, so all this is vacant at the moment. We've got a huge amount of batteries down here, which is awesome. And more gyroscopes. And this is under the landing pad. So that's where all of the, I'm guessing, all of the uh, drop points are that feed into the system, I would imagine. Okay, we got all of this. This looks like the hydrogen tanks above us to store for the hydrogen thrusters, which is Q. Then you've got your conveyor system running for... all of the different thrusters and machines and stuff, and your vents, more importantly. Though, one thing is interesting to me, that, at least not, again, keeping in mind this is a work in progress and there may be a lot planned that isn't finished yet, it doesn't seem very sealed. Um, other than the doorways. I mean, there's obviously airlock doors planned here, but... Some of this doesn't seem very air airtight sealed yet, so that's interesting. And this leads out to the top, which may eventually be something else, possibly. Maybe. So, oh, that's kind of cool. I just noticed that um, the missile one is connected to a conveyor, but these two... Catling turrets have their own cargo containers. That's pretty cool. So those would probably have a hard time running out of ammo as quickly. Yeah, see, it's like this stuff, that all of this is exposed. And I just find that odd is all. Um, but given that it's still unfinished, that could all be rectified later. I do think it is neat that with the multiple kinds of thrusters, you could take it into a planet's atmosphere and, you know, fly back out and everything. Kind of an all-purpose ship, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I like that. Um, okay, so I know this is a little bit shorter than I usually run, but unfortunately the builds that I chose this week just didn't have real lengthy interiors and stuff that took a long time to get through. Um, most of this week's builds were primarily for external aesthetics. I liked all of the how the outsides of the ship looks, but they didn't really have a whole lot of interior to explore. Um, so we kind of wrap things up a little faster than normal. So, um, But I think that is going to do it for this episode. So we're going to wrap things up here. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.